Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and things are getting pretty darn interesting. Uh, so before I get going, I want to remind you, I, I already pre-ordered my Ledger stacks. Um, it's They've made them look like a little iPhone or like small a mini iPhone. But um, anyway, they, they're doing pre-orders and I think these things are going to start shipping um, in March or April type deal. Uh, links in the top of the description, go check it out. Alright, listen to this. This is the guy, the CEO of Grayscale who has been rumored, they've been rumored recently to have problems. But in this clip, I think he puts things in perspective, and I say this all the time. Look, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the recession or crypto winner or whatever you call it is, if, you've, it, if you prepare properly, then, then um, it's an opportunity, not a bad thing. Um, I've been taking advantage of the opportunity quite a bit. Listen to what he says. Terrible. Not a crypto winner, it's, it's at least... Uh uh, an uncomfortable time of year uh, for crypto. You know, it is a crypto winter, right? We've been through this before. We're unfortunately going through it again, and we may have to go through one in the future. You know, think speaking of Voyager and things like that, at the moment, what you're going to see in this crypto winter will be more regulation and certainly some consolidation within the industry. We've seen time and again bad actors get called out, weeded out of the ecosystem, and crypto emerges more resilient and even stronger each time we see these types of events. And you expect that to, to play out the same way? I do. I've been in crypto for nine years. I've been through all kinds of cycles, and I've never been more confident or optimistic that crypto as an asset class is here to stay. This may, may be the, um, you know, you come out stronger on the other end. For XRP, this may be the biggest event ever for in terms of coming out strong out of a crypto winner now okay so this guy's ex sec and i wanted to show you this he says an se and this is this is one of the things this is one of the reasons i told you recently that i i sold out of a lot of xlm none of my xrp i sold out a lot of my xrm xlm into polysign private equity uh because the, i feel like there's some more shoes to drop where digital assets have um, vulnerability in terms of you know the regulation side of this until until the Gary Gensler's of the world get kicked out of office or, or whatever happens to them these these guys that are trying to hurt crypto now I don't think it's a long term issue but in the short term who knows what it could be it could be them filing a lawsuit against Binance or Coinbase or Tether uh, being targeted or whatever. But whatever it is, it in the short run, it could crush the market. Now these, again, that's back to the opportunity as far as the way I look at it. But look at this. He says, an SEC sweep of crypto intermediaries is coming. Senior SEC crypto officials have promised too many times for a crypto sweep not, not to happen. I worked at the SEC for 18 years. The SEC does not make idle threats and the runway no longer runneth over. He's got this graphic. SEC warning to all crypto intermediaries, register now or else you are running out of runway. An SEC crypto sweep is clearly imminent. All right. Um, now, this guy makes a very good point because you can see the stars potentially lining up in this kind of a direction. He says the significance of the SEC versus Ripple case grows heavier by the day. Whether it's after appeal or not, XRP could well be the only legitimate crypto token token left this time next year can i can only imagine what that means for price not to mention poor charles hoskinson's state of mind well two points to make out of this charles hoskinson looks scared every time i mean he's he's not acting rationally in these videos he's putting out about ripple and the xrp community and all that he's acting irrational almost to the point where it's like he's heard something that's made him a little fearful okay and look, and I corrected this guy in what he said on this. He said, I, I agree. You could very well have a scenario where only XRP has clarity and things that are built on the XRP ledger. That's pretty much right now 
Um, I, I went to cash in a lot of things. Right now, pretty much everything I own is XRP or things built on the XRP ledger. I just feel like it's smart. Okay, and then remember this article. Someone put this out. It's from October 16th, 2018. Could Trump hold the key to XRP's future? Fortune's Ripple executives say it's possible. Now go down. Now we know that the, the lawsuit dropped in December 2020, okay, from Jay Clayton. He drops it. Now the, the crazy thing is that he worked for Trump. December 2020, he drops the lawsuit. The lawsuit, we've set, John Deaton said all along, it was used as a weapon, okay? So we assumed that Jay Clayton was working for, or we assumed that, that Jay Clayton dropped this lawsuit and, and it was used as a weapon, okay? Well, look down here. Political allies for XRP could suppress other cryptos. This would clearly help improve the price of XRP. However, more sig significantly, it could close could also suppress Bitcoin and Ethereum. As often is the case in business and politics, the easiest way to, to the top is climbing over your rivals. Although things may be, be slightly different in crypto world, given the decentralized nature of the industry, it's still possible. Mostly significant backing from the White House could be the boost XRP needs at the moment. This year, Ripple has done its uh, bit to bolster XRP price chart. So you have to wonder Okay. I've, I have literally, in fact, I know, I'll tell you who I was listening about a week ago. Some of these Twitter spaces are fascinating. I was listening about a week ago to some, a guy named, uh, he was on that Mario guys, Twitter spaces. And he was, he was talking to the guy that was in the Trump administration. And his name was Sebastian Gorka, extremely intelligent guy. And the guy was telling a story about how when he entered, he was a senior advisor to the Trump to Trump when he went in, and he was telling a story about how when they went in, one of the uh, that he he sat in the back room of the corner of the room and, and observed, and he said, "I just watched all of these people, military and otherwise, these high ups in in the government." And he said, "I watched them as Trump began giving orders and all this stuff." And I watched them doing their eye rolls and all. And he said, he said, that was, he, he said, I never believed in a deep state until I saw it firsthand. He said, I, I thought that was tinfoil hat. Well, so the, so, but his point was, is that a lot of these establishment people, he was saying, I'm not saying he was saying, had no intention of carrying out what the commander in chief was saying they were going to carry out. Okay. Well, my question is, was Jay Clayton one of those guys? <laughs> That's the question. Um, was he the guy that was going to work against the interests of what Trump may have wanted? Um, is that what happened? Is that why he dropped the lawsuit right when he walked out the door so his boss couldn't reprimand or couldn't do anything about it? <sighs> it's a good question. Breaking. Because uh, remember, we also had back in, during the day, we had, to, we had congressmen that were sending letters to Jay Clayton saying, this is a national security interest here. Bitcoin's controlled by China, and it's a national security concern to not go after U.S.-based digital technology like this. They didn't name Ripple by name, but reading between the lines. All right, moving along. Breaking Binance to reportedly buy assets of bankrupt crypto broker Voyager in $1 billion deal. Voyager had previously been bailed out by FTX. All right, breaking Sam Bankman free to be extradited to the United States. Apparently, he doesn't like his living conditions there in the Bahamas, in the jail. <laughs> and then this Wall Street Journal opinion, where was Biden's SEC sheriff on Sam Bankman free? And I said, he was having meetings with Sam Bankman free. That's where he was. But this Wall Street Journal article, I think, is saying some other things here. Let me get you to that part. A cynic might wonder if Mr. Gensler was waiting for a crypto disaster to serve as the impetus for Congress to grant him authority to regulate industry aggressively. Let me ask you a question. Did they just say that Gary Gensler may have been involved in FTX and thus this was by design to, take, to hit the crypto industry so that he could then say, yep, see, we need to regulate it? Is that what they're saying right here? Because it sounds an awful lot like that goes on. Increased regulation wouldn't necessarily have prevented the FTX crack up. 
uh, though it would have raised barriers to entry for competitors, Mr. Gent, as Mr. Gensler noted in an MIT lecture on crypto regulation. This isn't the first time customer funds went missi missing on Mr. Gensler's watch. In 2011, more than a billion disappeared from the failed MF Global brokerage firm run by former Democrat New Jersey Governor John Corzine. The CME Futures Exchange reported that MF Global hadn't been complying with federal rules on separating client funds. Mr. Gensler, then chairman of the CFTC, was MF Global's primary regulator. During Beltway stints, he and Mr. Corzine helped write the 2002 Sarbanes-Oxley Act, tightening securities re regulation in the, in the wake of the Enron fraud. In other words, Gary Gensler, everywhere that there's fraud, Gary Gensler is there. He's there before, during, and after the fraud. He's there before when he should have sp spotted it in his job, okay, at the, at the CFTC in the, in, in the case of MF Global and the SEC in the case of FTX. He's there before. He should be regulating it. Then he's there during, trying to act like he didn't know anything about it and doesn't have responsibility. Then he's there after. He keeps getting reappointments to all these places to keep doing what he's doing. And he's, being, he's the guy who, after he misses things, he gets to help write the write the legislation to supposedly fix it. <laughs> are, you, are we noticing a pattern? This is crazy. This guy would have been out on his butt in any job in the private sector for failure after failure after failure. But the question I have is, is it really failure or is, is this the whole way that the corrupt thing works? Is that they've got people there who know it's happening. Remember, Remember when Madoff happened? They said that, that Wall Street and all these people, these, Wall, they were about to put Madoff in as the SEC chairman. He was, his daughter married somebody or something like that from the SEC. It's like, it's almost like they're all in on it and it's one big mafia and they know about the frauds. That's what it's like. It, I mean, how many, how, how, how much of a pattern do you have to see before you're like, oh shoot. These guys are doing, they're involved in it. I'm not saying they are involved in it. I'm saying it, it sure looks that way. At, at what point, how many times do these things have to happen while these people are there before, during, and after without somebody putting their butt in front of Congress or putting them in jail maybe and saying, look, what is going on here? If, you, if they ever followed it all the way to the end, I think that's exactly what you'd probably find. But they don't follow these things to the end because it implicates them and all their friends. That's the reason. Breaking report. Rumors now swirling that Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has emerged as Elon Musk pick for Twitter CEO. Now, this opens a freaking can of XRP worms. And let me show you why. I refer you to my video, September 17th, 2020. You should go watch it. It's called Ripple, Swift, Curson, Kushner, Trump, Netanyahu, Israel, and XRP. All connected, all the money. Go watch it. Here's, remember, remember who this is. This is Ken Curson. He was on Ripple's board. The, the, um, the three-letter agency went after him right at the culmination of the end of Trump's term, okay? Just like they went after a lot of the other people in that administration or affiliated or friends and all that. The same, these are the same three letter agencies that are now being exposed by Elon Musk at Twitter, okay? And now they're talking about Jared Kushner, who was Trump's son in law, who was best friends with Ken Kurson, who was on Ripple's board. This is Ken Kurson. Hey. My big obsession right now is, is cryptocurrency and the way the blockchain in, in particular is go, just going to change everything. I, I think it's going to come to redefine money and even uh, what, what being a nation means. So I'm spending a lot of my time uh, focused what on cryptocurrency and helping means. businesses understand the blockchain. Folks, if you don't think that crypto is massive, <laughs> what he just said, it's going to redefine what being a nation means. Now. Many of you aren't going to remem remember this, but check this out. This tweet indicates that it's Joel Katz who has freed his seat at the Ripple Board of Directors for Ken Curson. David Schwartz literally gave up his board seat and he says, yes, I'm all in with Ripple either way. And now we have Ken too. 
All right, that's Ken Kirsten with Ivanka Trump. New guy versus Dave. And look, folks, none of what I'm talking about is political. To be honest, I don't know, I don't know the difference between the good and bad guys anymore on, in politics. Both, from what I can tell, both sides have been compromised by countries that are not the United States. So I don't know who all's good guys and who all's bad guys anymore. So I'm just covering it, okay? Now here, David Schwartz says, thanks for the kind word. They're saying David Schwartz has made room for Ken Kirsten. Thanks for the kind words. My desk is just a hundred feet or so from the room where the board meets and I'll be in touch. I'll be keeping in touch with all the members of the board, old and new. In the earlier days, it wasn't that uncommon for some technical issue to come up during a board meeting. It's a lot less common now, mostly since Ripple hasn't made a significant changes to its strategy in more than a year. Tune-ups and recalibration, sure, but Days of having a new two-year two plan every three months seems to be behind us. All right. Then um, Jamie Nix, you should go watch this. I'm going to play you just the beginning of it. Jamie Nix has put together an Elon Musk, Jared Kushner video. Yeah, it seems like there's some merit to Ethereum as well and, and maybe some of the others. But, you know, I'm not sure. It's like I'm not sure that it would be a good use of Tesla resources to get involved in crypto. I mean, we're really just trying to accelerate the advance of sustainable energy. And I mean, I think actually one of the downsides of crypto is that it computationally, it's like quite energy intensive. So What's all that? like there had to be some kind of constraints on the creation of crypto. So, but it's very energy intensive to create like the incremental Bitcoin at this point. Yeah, but at the, at same, by the same time, there See, were... Now he's talking to Kathy Wood in this clip, who's a Bitcoin maximalist, but he just kind of, you know, that's got to be making her uncomfortable with the fact, but it's... It's just the way it is. And she she and others are gonna to have to deal with it. And he's got the XRP, you know, and so XRP syncs up with everything that Elon Musk is. And by the way, remember how I told you that Jared Kushner, his family, as I recall, Benjamin Netanyahu would literally spend the night at their house when he was visiting the United States when Jared Kushner was a kid. Okay? This is how tight they are. Uh, Netanyahu, right at the end of Trump's term, they were meeting with them over there and they said they had a deal for peace in the Middle East that for 50 years, that hadn't happened in 50 years. And I don't think the people in Israel would just let that go too easily, do you? Um, so, and it would, ex it, it would also explain a lot of the craziness we've been watching for the next the last two years. So, um, but so, so remember, Jared Kushner, who's in the, here he is in the picture, hanging out with Elon Musk at the World Cup. And you know they wanted to show this. They wanted to show this intentionally because um, they know that they're being filmed wherever they go. So they wouldn't have stood right there beside each other unless they wanted to telegraph it to the world. Well, remember this? This is, this is really, I think this is, the irony of this is that this article from, uh, insider business insider this article is march 21st 2018 this is literally the day before the i think don't quote me but i'm almost positive march 21st 2018 is literally the day before the memo the perkins cooey memo to get the ethereum free pass was sent over to the sec the the very this this is the day before that elon musk quietly went to technological superpower Israel to drink absinthe, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong, and discuss the future of Tesla in the Middle East. And down here it says, wow, Elon Musk recent, secretly visits Israel to seek collaboration between Tesla and the Israeli, Israeli computer vision Cortica, which is like an AI company. So anyway, I'm not saying that he was there meeting on digital currency, but I am saying he was secretly meeting with Netanyahu, and that is one degree from Jared Kushner. I'm the, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that there is a lot going on. The world is completely changing right before your eyes.